Hey guys, Mr. B here. Just thought I'd finally give you guys a little update on what's actually in the garden this year. Uh, again, like all my other videos say, I've kind of gotten behind on uh, things this year, but it didn't really matter because uh, we really uh, didn't start getting any heat till about two, three weeks ago. So uh, the stuff that got in the ground is really starting to pop up. So let me kind of go real quickly here so I can kind of get through the whole garden. Um, what I got here, these are... Uh, tomatillos there's three of them in this barrel i have another barrel off to the right here i'll show you this got three more tomatillos in it but uh they're doing great they're doing big they've got big blooms on them already big thick stems and they're doing real well um these three barrels right over here they've just got some uh things in them that are kind of hardening off out here these three barrels are actually going to have all my pickling cucumbers in it but those are hale's best uh cantaloupes there uh, those are my national pickling cucumbers and my sugar baby watermelons so those all grew by seed in the grow station you guys have seen those and they're out here hardening off uh, this is some of the uh, Indian gem corn that I got from uh, I believe Nicole had a seed giveaway on that a few years ago and actually saved some of my seed from last year and grew my own this year so that stuff's really beautiful really cool thank you for that stuff uh, Nicole if you were the one that gave that away I believe you were uh, this is a new little bed that I have up here the, the bottom part's kind of already starting to um, go away this is my Oregon uh, sugar snap peas they've just been awesome this thing's pumped out just hundreds and hundreds of these things but this is already starting to go down and then the thing that's coming up out of the back is the purple hull uh green beans really cool cool little purple blossoms um is kicking out these really cool purple heirloom variety of purple green beans let me see if I can see any of the little blooms. Really cool. It's just going to pump out a ton of these things. I put a lot of them in there. The uh, elephant heart plum doing real good. <coughs> Pardon me. Here's that other tub of tomatillos. This is a different variety. That other one was uh, what I call Timmy's tomatillo. It's one that my <laughs> my boy picked some volunteers one year that we forgot what variety they were. So we I just nicknamed them after him. These are the San Juanito um, tomatillos. Again, very thick and, and bushy plants this year. Uh, just some little herbs. I got the spearmint that came back dangerous to put that stuff in the ground it gets everywhere so it's in a pot for me uh lemon verbena lemon thyme some italian parsley that i've kind of let go to seed a bunch of different three different kinds of garlic going across here those should be ready for harvest in a couple weeks or so our little uh babcock white peach That's doing well. Last year's the first year that it actually put fruit on it so it was uh, excellent we've been eating the little uh uh, what are these? My mother-in-law gave this one to us. It's a pink lemonade blueberry bush. So we've been eating off of that thing. There's not many left. Another little uh, new raised bed that I made with the uh, Oregon sugar peas on it. That was a heavy producer. Then in the back here is the uh, a Blue Lake pole bean not the bush bean but the pole bean so that's growing up there too it's starting to put out lots of little blooms and little green beans are starting to pop up everywhere on that too so that's growing all the way up these are some uh, low quat trees that i grew from a uh, seed they're kind of in front of my compost bins all right so here's the nice big organized bed here this is uh my tomatoes and peppers this thing's doing really really good this year um just real quick down front so a couple of uh bohemian goat peppers that i overwintered uh from scott <coughs> excuse me at the garden pit uh i uh, grew those last year overwintered them and here they are hopefully they'll pop back uh yellow bell pepper that one's kind of got some yellowing to the uh Leaves. I put in some liquid uh, bone meal, calcium, and stuff in there to hopefully get that one to green up a little bit too. Uh, another yellow bell, 
mammoth jalapeno and another mammoth jalapeno. So the way I got the raised bed designed this year, I've kind of got it in rows that are going to go short, taller, and then tallest in the back. Green bell peppers along the front here. In the middle row, in cages that I'm not going to single stem, that I'm going to let grow natural, are one, two, three, four um, Amish paste tomatoes. I'm going to be using those for saucing. And then in the back is my usual uh, seven different varieties that I'm going to single stem. I've got the uh, the blueberries variety, three of those in there from Wild Boar Farms. Sweet 100, that one I'm actually going to double stem. I've, I'll show you from the back side. There's a sucker that I let grow up real big. That, that one's going to be a double stem since that's the only one I have one of. Uh, two golden sun rays. Two Cherokee purple. Three of one of my favorite, the woodle orange. Those three across the back. Three Paul Robesons. There, there, and there. And then two gold metal. And I did the same thing on this side too. There's four more of the Amish paste. And up front there's four, uh, six of the jalapenos. So you kind of see from here, I've kind of got them in rows. The shorter row of peppers. This is going to be a mid-range row of the uh, Amish paste in the back. Are going to go all the way up and single stem up that post there. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'll tell you what, this year I've done a, a couple little different things in here, and these are the thickest, healthiest tomatoes I've ever had. A couple of <clears throat> additives that I did this year, um, I did a lot more worm castings of my own from my worm bins. I put a whole scoop, about a, a half of a cup at the base of each of these plants when I put them in. The other thing I used was insect frass. If you guys haven't heard of that, it's basically just, uh, they take mealworms, feed them organic uh, vegetables, just vegetables, and their excrement, their frass. Um, it's an awesome source of, of biological activity and, and uh, and it's got fertilizer to it too, but it really helps fend off uh, uh, insects and things like that in the plant. It helps to build its uh, immune system. It's just, it's just, I haven't grown plants that are just this thick and lush. Uh, just unbelievable. The, the size of the stems are bigger than my thumb. They're huge. So that's kind of what I did in here, and I'm really, really seeing a difference in this. So a real quick little thing too here on single stemming. You'll see a good... Um, example of it here main stem of the plant coming up here this guy coming out of the the crotch of these two this that's your sucker that's what you would snip off and you can take that put it into some nice soil in a cup give it some uh, liquid seaweed and you could clone that plant that would be a clone of this plant and it would just grow up to be a regular uh, plant just like this one but in single stemming, you snip off these suckers and you wrap them around the string as it grows up that pole. And it just puts all the growth towards the main bunches of blooms that come off the main stem. Because those little suckers, they take a lot longer to grow up to be an adult plant on here and to produce fruit. So put all that strength and uh, nourishment towards the main plant instead of those little suckers and it's just it's just a different way of growing them and, uh, and I like it it produces real heavily so you know every few days I come out here like this here I just break off that little sucker I just drop it down in the bottom then the bugs can eat that instead of my plant and I just come along knocking those off now you don't want to do the ones that are super high to the top just yet because if anything ever accidentally broke off the top of your plant, you're gonna use that next sucker to be your main plant growing up. So knock off the bottom ones like I've done here, boom, 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 but don't do the ones at the very top just yet because if, if I busted off this main stem, I would need that sucker to keep growing up. So it's looking really good down this side too. I mean, the, the blooms are just huge. This is that uh, Cherokee purple. They're just, they're just so much more healthy looking this year. So here's that, that sweet 100, and I'll show you what I did. Here's the main stem. 
here's the branch, here's the sucker that came out of it. I'm letting this sucker turn into a whole another plant. See, there's the next little set of, of buds right up there. So this one, I'm going to run a string up this side and up this side so that one plant is now going to become two single stemmed plants where the rest of them I will just keep chopping off the uh, suckers and single stem them. These are those uh, blueberries variety. They're just, man, they're just the coolest looking bush this year. Really, really super healthy. I mean, they're almost, they're almost like a, a fern. They're so dark green. So that's kind of what's going on in the tomato and pepper bed. Here's those Amish paste tomatoes. They're a funky heirloom variety. You know, they get, they get the funky curly branches and stuff like that. But these I'm going to leave all of the suckers on and allow this thing just to bush out because it's a determinate variety. It's going to come up to a certain height and hopefully pump out all of its stuff at uh, not at once but uh, real close to each other so that you can harvest all of it and do your canning and stuff from that so that's a de determinate variety I'm s yes and these are indeterminate so these are just going to grow 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 until the season's over till they die of frost and out here where i'm at i'll be picking tomatoes off these into november <coughs> uh here's just kind of my my salad veggie green garden growing over here. I got some broccoli in here that kind of got root bound and they're kind of late. So they're, they're putting out their, their, uh, their blooms, uh, kind of small. So that was kind of a flop on those, but oh well. Uh, red chard, green chard. You'll see this junk on here. Yes, I have horrible problem with, Leaf miners. You see on the back the little white dots? Here, here, those are the eggs. They hatch, they send a little uh, maggot like creature inside, and it just sits there and eats away at the inside of the leaf. It drops out, pupates in the ground, turns into another fly, and they come out and eat the heck out of my garden. Little suckers. Uh, so, yellow chard. Siberian kale. Here's a bunch of my leftover tomatoes. I'm giving this one to a friend. Um, hope you uh, do well with those, Gideon. Um, Uzbek sweetness melons hardening off. And the green flesh melon. Those are these uh, Aranas de Amaric uh, melons from rareseeds.com. There was a free batch that they gave out. This is the second year I'm growing all of those. Some extra chives, some ge extra gem corn I'm giving to a friend. Uh, some more little veg going over here. These are beautiful. These are a variety of uh, red butterleaf lettuce. Hopefully the film does justice to these because they're just so cool looking. This is the flashy trout back lettuce. It's done real well too. Uh, some of them we just pick from around the outside. So other times we'll just pick the whole head. And the beets are doing good too. Again, have the leaf miners on those, but I just come out, pick off the old leaves, new ones grow. So got a bunch of rows of the red beets here. Got the golden beets in the back. This is the first year I've actually had them grow pretty nice like this. I kind of bunched them up closer this year. And uh, I don't know why, but that kind of helped. And keeping them a lot more moist this year too. But you see the, the leaf miner problem I have. It really stinks. What I kind of did over here, I put one of these little sticky things in here. And you can see, those are the guys. Those are the culprits. And you can see it. And I haven't caught any ladybugs. I haven't caught any mantises. Haven't caught any good beneficial stuff on it. Just these leaf miner garbage flies. Anyway, guys, that's it. It's been a lot of work. I'm uh, slowly and surely getting it taken care of. But uh, I'm finally glad that it's in the ground. And now i got to put these things on strings and get them strung up. So I uh, hope your guys' gardens are growing good. Um, Leave any comments, any questions, hit like, uh, subscribe if you want, and I appreciate you guys watching.